Hello everyone. Today we're talking about the adrenal glands and adrenal exhaustion. My name is Dr Sandra Cabo, I'm a medical doctor and I'm joined by our resident naturopath Victoria Taylor. Hi Victoria. Hi Dr Cabo and hi to everybody that's choosing to watch us. Yes, it's great that you joined us and we're talking about a really interesting subject um, and that is how healthy are your adrenal glands? Now the adrenal glands you probably know are very small glands and they sit on top of your kidneys like little hats. And they've got two parts, the outer part, which is the cortex, and the inner core, which is soft and mushy, called the medulla. The outer part produces steroid hormones, such as cortisone, it's probably the best known one, and DHEA, pregnenolone, and those hormones can be converted into other steroids. The inner part of your adrenals is very different. It's very specialized and it produces what we call biogenic amines, mm -hmm. such as adrenaline mm -hmm. and dopamine. And those amines stimulate you. We know what adrenaline is like. You, when you get excited or frightened, your body gets flushed with huge amounts of adrenaline and you can feel really excited or you can feel very, very frightened if you're being attacked by something and you go into fight or flight. Though obviously we want our adrenals to be functioning perfectly because I call them your survival glands. Well, they are and they're also called your, well, it's the DHEA that's made in the cortex, that's the youth hormone. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as it we age, it tends to go down. Yes, which is such a shame. That's right. Well, Victoria and I are in our seventies, and we take DHEA. Oh, every day. Yes, um, because it's true. It is a youth hormone, and if you measure the levels of the hormone DHEA in the blood of a young person, they're much, much higher than an old person. Mm -hmm. And so it is considered to be an anti-aging hormone. Um, so if we have healthy adrenal glands, you know, we're producing enough cortisol, and particularly in the morning, our adrenal glands are programmed by our circadian rhythm through our hypothalamus to produce more cortisol in the morning to help us face the challenges of a new day. And then later in the day that drops off and when we go to sleep, it's much lower so that we can relax. Because all the adrenal hormones are stimulatory. So if you have incredible prolonged stress, particularly PTSD, your adrenals may be in a state of continual fight or flight and you're always hyped up and you can't relax. So that's not a good thing. And, you know, treatment for severe anxiety or PTSD, it, it really needs to address Gosh, that's the going adrenals. that's so ageing yes. for the person. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's and awesome. it's interesting too, Victoria, that they found in people who are more prone to get long COVID, and they don't get better for six months or even several years, they need their adrenal gland function checked with blood tests mm -hmm. because often it's suboptimal. It's right on the low end of normal, and if you improve their adrenals, through nutritional medicine and or they may need a low dose of cortisone, mm -hmm. they get over the long COVID. Yes. Yeah. So as I said, you know, your adrenal glands are your survival glands. You won't survive well without them. But, you know, cortisone is produced in our body to control inflammation. And if we don't have enough cortisol, we will have severe inflammation in our body. Um, and then you've got the other steroid hormones like aldosterone, which are produced in the adrenals, and that controls the balance of salt and other electrolytes in your body. So they're survival hormones. And, you know, people can have adrenal gland problems for years and it doesn't get picked up. Well, doctors will just, may just say that it's, you're not getting enough sleep. You're, you're too highly stressed. Maybe the job's taking too much out of you. Yes. Just things like that making it your responsibility 
And it's just the parts of you pigging out a bit. That's right, you know, <laughs> some of your organs aren't doing their job. And, you know, the adrenal glands, as I said, they're small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're very fatty. So tissues in our body that are fatty are prone to oxidative damage from free radicals. Mm-hmm. But what so happens they're fragile. To, but what happens if they're very fatty? What happens to people that are put on cholesterol drugs? Well, cholesterol alone drugs um, can reduce the production of steroid hormones because all steroid hormones are made from cholesterol. Yes, so, <laughs> so they're giving you a medicine that's actually potentially going to make you sicker so you've got to go back and seek them again? Well, it's not really like that. I mean, you know... I'm not a believer in really low cholesterol levels. Yes, I um, But then you don't want super high either, but that can be controlled by having a healthy liver and a good diet and exercise. Um, and, you know, very large doses of cholesterol-lowering drugs can have side effects. And it's interesting to know that your adrenals produce all of their steroid hormones from cholesterol. Yeah, right. And yes. we produce our vitamin D from cholesterol too. Yes. So... We need cholesterol, hey? Eh? And if you don't eat any, your liver will make it because you need it for survival. Because you're not going to survive without adrenal hormones. So, you know, if somebody has symptoms of an underactive adrenal glands, they will feel extremely tired, particularly in the mornings when they're meant to be producing more cortisol. Um, they'll have excessive inflammation in their body. They may have abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, a lot of digestive symptoms. Uh, They may have a lot of headaches, foggy brain, mood changes. You know, the symptoms are very diverse um, because steroid hormones produced by the adrenals have such widespread effects in our bodies. It's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. And I recently had a patient who had been unwell for 10 years, right, multiple ailments. And I said to her, has anybody checked your adrenals? And she didn't know. And I couldn't find any evidence of her adrenals ever being checked. So I did a blood test to check the level of her cortisol in the morning and then later in the day, because we're meant to see it high in the morning and come down later in the day. And her adrenal glands had failed. Her cortisol level was 19. Oh. And the normal range is about 150 to 650. Yes, and you want it closer yeah. to the 550, sort of up yeah, there. Yeah, at least in the middle, don't yes. you? Yes, yeah. definitely. And so I said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but your adrenal glands are failed and you probably have Addison's disease or something else has happened to your adrenals. So that lady is now on a little pump which releases cortisol into her body uh-huh. and she's much better. Right. So, you know... Adrenal failure can be missed, and it's a simple blood test to check your adrenals. Mm -hmm. You can also check the DHEA level, because that's produced by the adrenal cortex. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So what keeps our adrenals healthy, you know, the outer layer, the cortex? Something really basic. What is it? Vitamin C. Vitamin C <laughs> and magnesium. Yeah, and magnesium. They both concentrate. Yeah, you're right. Yes. And vitamin D, of course. Yeah, well, that helps everything. Vitamin D is anti-inflammatory. But, you know, the cortex, as I said, is, is fatty and it's very vulnerable to oxidative damage. So we need antioxidants to yes. protect our adrenals. So we need vitamin C. And sometimes we need two or three thousand milligrams a day. But if you're thinking about antioxidants, wouldn't you also think of NAC? Yes, NAC is very oh. good. N-acetylcysteine yeah. can repair cell damage. Yes. So if you've got damaged adrenals, NAC, very good point. N-acetylcysteine and definitely magnesium because magnesium is needed for 300 enzyme systems in your body. So there's a lot of enzymes happening in your adrenals that are required to manufacture the hormones. Yes, but it's yeah. also because your adrenals are the seat of your stress response, and if you've had your stress band tight, 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 magnesium just puts a little bit of slack in the band so that you can relax. Yes. And that means that you you can start breathing again, that you just don't need that cortisol. You can sort of yes, see the right. trees for the forest for a a little while. Yeah. Mm. 
Isn't it the forest for the trees? I thought it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's a good saying. You get clarity back. When you relax, yes. you get clarity. We'll know focus. which way that little one. <laughs> <laughs> Send us an email and let us know. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, magnesium, the great relaxer, can be a miracle. Definitely. For, for many things. Um, your nervous system, your muscles, and also for the adrenals. So, you know, there's all different grades of adrenal gland exhaustion. It can be severe, like the lady I told you about who had adrenal gland failure, Addison's disease. It's not common, but it's often not picked up early enough and it's dangerous. But it's far more common for someone to just have suboptimal adrenal gland function where mm -hmm. you'll find that their levels of cortisol are right at the bottom of normal or just slightly above the bottom of the normal range. And that's when we use things like the vitamin C, um, the magnesium, the NAC, and you know, improve their sleep. diet. Improved sleep. Improved sleep, yes. yes. But we also have those other people who have low, S, low cortisol in the morning, and then it goes up in the afternoon, early evening, and they can't get to sleep. So, yes. so that's when the cortisone for a short time, just to get the circadian rhythms back in balance. Yes, well we can, you know, if people are right on the bottom of normal, we can take a, a low dose of cortisone in the form of hydrocortisone um, and it's not going to cause side effects because it's just a low dose. Whereas, you know, people with severe inflammatory diseases, they need a big pharmaceutical dose of uh, prednisone or some other synthetic steroid and of course long term that would have side effects. So we're talking about very low dose physiological mm hydrocortisone, but often we just get very good results with improving the diet, getting more antioxidants in your diet, eating the rainbow, doing some raw juicing, um, getting enough protein, taking your NAC, your selenium, your magnesium, your vitamin C can be incredibly effective yes, and, and getting more rest and more getting good sleep. Good sleep. But there's also the way we respond to stress. So I tend to promote no news, little <laughs> drama, and at least one good session of a wonderful belly laugh every day. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good idea. So that releases hormones that are the happy hormones. Yes, that you're exactly right. That. Yeah. So, you know, if you have very low levels of DHEA, um, you can take a DHEA supplement it's on prescription in Australia, in America, it's over the counter. Um, but it's very safe. Now, some people consider it an anabolic steroid, but it's not really. Um, testosterone can be if you take very big doses, but you don't need very big doses. Um, and they can have side effects. So, you know, the adrenal glands, the survival glands, have you ever had them checked with a simple blood test? And it can be most worthwhile uh, particularly if you're very tired, you're flat, you've got a lot of digestive issues, you've got some chronic unexplained illness, mysterious illness, it's always wise to have your adrenal function checked. Yes, yeah. very much so. Okay. And, yes. And um, if you want to listen to more podcasts, uh, go to sandracavo.com. You can also go to liverdoctor.com because we have some articles on adrenal gland exhaustion where you can get a little bit more detail. And you can send us an email. You can send us an email, ask us a question. Yeah, yes. we love We're to hear from you. We're more than happy to, hear, to answer you. Yeah, it's great getting feedback. And we love helping people. And, um, you know, we learn a lot from the patients too. Um, we love that feedback. So thanks for listening and look after your adrenal glands. It certainly will. Bye for now. Bye-bye now.